Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Today is one of, I think it's what, like the 14th of September, and it's one of the last days uh, that I have left of feeding any of these bees. Um, this process has gone really, really well, really, really simply this year because of the fact that I decided to give all of these colonies uh, an unfinished honey box on top. So that really, really cut the amount that we had to feed basically in half or even more. And um, when you add that to the fact that we always take off all of the honey boxes before goldenrod, that meant that the amount that I had to feed was a lot less this year than in previous years. But that leads me to the topic of like, what should a colony look like when it's going into winter? How much do you have to feed? When do you know when to be done feeding? Um, and there are a lot of variables to the answers to those questions. And first and foremost, the biggest variable is where you're at in the year. Um, and based in that is where you're at geographically. So I'm in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And like I said, I'm almost done feeding for the year. So my bee season is almost complete. If you are south of me, which the vast majority of you in the U.S. are, um, you probably have a good month or two left of foraging and then feeding. Like in the lower peninsula, I would always be done feeding usually in the first week of October. I tried to be done by October all the time, but that never really happened. And so I always ended up getting done 6th, 7th, 8th of October. So figuring out whenever the goldenrod is going to dry up for you and figuring out exactly when the nights are going to start getting really cold and the days are gonna start being cold enough to keep the bees in the boxes, those dates are going to lead you to the date by which you need to have your bees up to weight. Now, what should that weight be? Um, you know, that's almost, the answer to that question is almost useless. Because if I tell you it's supposed to be 100 pounds, are you going to go out there and actually measure? Uh, and in that, are you going to try in any way to figure out how much the equipment weighs and all that? So... I don't think about it quite so mathematically or quite so scientifically. Basically, I just want every single frame in the entire hive to be heavy with honey. I want when I try to lift it from the back of the colony for me to not be able to do that with one arm. It should be a tremendous effort. But if you really do want a number, that 100 pound mark is a good one. I can almost never get a single up to 100 pounds um, but it gets pretty close and I, once again, don't really measure. I just try to lift it. And if I really cannot lift it with one hand, then it's usually good. If you are skeptical of your ability to just feel by waiting or by lifting the back of the hive, then, um, use this as a learning opportunity. And when you lift it, then open up the cover. Don't start removing frames late in the year just to get a good idea of what it should feel like, but lift up the cover and see what's going on inside that in that colony. If all those frames look like they're nice and fat and heavy with honey, and it felt really heavy to you with that one arm, then that's probably good. Now, you can always go a couple more buckets of syrup just to be a little bit safer and a little bit more insurance in your overall winter weight, but uh, getting that box just about as full and as heavy as it can be, or those boxes just about as full and as heavy as they can be, is the goal. Now, in one of the beekeeping groups that I'm a part of and that I tend to take part in, uh, there are a bunch that I'm a part of that I don't take part in at all because there's a lot of people with a lot of really loud and uh, frustrating opinions in a lot of those groups. But there are a few groups that I'm a part of actively and in one this last week, somebody asked this exact question, when am I done feeding? How much do I have to feed? And I said my colonies at this time of year should be 90% honey slash syrup and that I really, really don't want a crazy amount of brood in the colonies at this time. And then a guy comes beyond her, uh, behind me and replies after I'd conversed with the original poster, um, and replies, oh, you need this amount of bees to survive the winter, so I feed one-to-one -to, -one to get them to brood up in the fall. Ah, I mean, for a beginner, that's a tough set of differing opinions to distinguish from, because they both sound like they make sense. Um, the thing that he is, I don't think, taking into consideration is the overall amount of 
food that goes into rearing brood nests and the minimal amount of food that would be left for his bees over winter. And you add that to the length of life of a winter bee, up to six or seven months, um, his opinion is, in my opinion, wrong. In the latter part of the summer and the early part of the fall, the brood nest is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And in an optimal situation, that space as it is shrinking should be being taken up by syrup or honey so that they can have a proper winter configuration to go through winter. Now, naturally, a normal course of circumstances will lead the queen to start slowing down her brood rearing at the summer solstice. So, you know, right in the second the beginning of the second half of summer she's going to start to shrink that brood nest naturally now there's nothing wrong with that once again because naturally that's supposed to be an indication of okay let's pack away these reserves and make sure that we have enough for winter um and then you know of course that throughout that entire time there's winter bees being reared in that brood nest and it's super super important to have healthy winter bees and that's a completely different discussion for a completely different video but the end of the summer should not be a time when your colonies are brooding up. Not unless you have a crazy amount of time to continue to monitor your bees and to continue to feed supplemental food because you're pushing them into an unnatural situation that is going to make an already fairly arduous winter that much trickier for them to survive. So. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know why I added that entire part to this video, just because I guess it was an instructive moment and because I was sort of frustrated and I didn't want to voice my frustration in that beekeeping group. But either way, my point is these colonies should be mostly honey and syrup by now here in the Upper Peninsula and at your portion of, at your corresponding portion of the bee year, uh, your colony should be mainly syrup and honey um, and just a ton, a ton of bees. It should be the most cramped looking hive that you've ever seen. It should be a certain swarm in June, but you know, a certain swarm in June in mid to late September is a perfect looking colony that will have a really, really good chance at surviving the, the upcoming winter. So yeah. Get that feed on those colonies. If you think that they're too light, feed some more. Um, if you have an experienced beekeeper around you, have them come out and lift it up and tell you what they think as far as what that colony feels like and how much you need to feed or whether or not you do need to feed. But either way, just if you're, if you're concerned about it, feed some more. They need a lot. Um, they need to be healthy, but once again, that kind of conversation should have happened probably a month ago. So if you haven't already taken care of your mite load and you are concerned about that at all, test and treat now. Don't wait. These winter bees need to be healthy. Um, if I were doing that now in my area, it would be well too late. So uh, yeah, that's a discussion to have in the beginning of August. Now is the time to make sure that your colonies have enough food and to make sure that your colonies are in a proper winter configuration. So get them down to their brood nest size, get that brood nest size just jam packed full of syrup and honey. And uh, yeah, make it so that you can't lift them. Happy, heavy, healthy. All right, that's about all I have in this rant. Thank you very much for listening to it. Ah, get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.